Bristol Myers, makers of Ipana toothpaste for the smile of beauty, and Minute Rub, the modern chest rub, bring you the Alan Young Show. <laughs> Well, it's Friday night, and once again we take it to the little white cottage in Van Nuys, California, where we find the star of our show, the young man who is young today and young forever, Alan Young! <laughs> well, Alan and Jonathan Mildew, the ham actor who has rented Alan's spare room, have just finished breakfast, and Alan is looking at the morning paper. The stuff you find in the papers these days, Jonathan. Well, I never read the papers, me lad. The help-wanted section makes Jonathan Mildew nervous. Ah, I was looking in the personal column, Jonathan. You find the strangest thing in the personal column. Just listen to this item. Pepsi-Cola Skyrider would like to meet somebody with 50 gallons of cream. Object, old buttermilk skies. Lad, why must you waste your time with such trivial nonsense? Uh, Events of great import are transpiring about us every moment. Look at the headlines, my lad. Look at the headlines. Oh, what's the use of looking at the headlines? Always a story about Hubert Updike. Look at page one of today's paper. Hmm? Hubert Updike makes down payment on the state of Arizona. <laughs> Claims he needs Grand Canyon for safe deposit box. <laughs> Well, that's how this cruel world is, my lad. Mm. People judge you by your money, not by your culture. Mm. It's a shame. Down with money, up with art. Down with money, up with art. Sounds like a new type of (laughs) yo-yo. Nothing in this paper but Hubert Updike. Look at this story. Hubert Updike, elected president of the Adventurers Club. That Hubert ought to... Oh, my lad, only the bravest men are elected into the Adventurers Club. Mm. They elect those who have faced grave danger. Mm. Those who have come face to face with utter destruction. My boy, have you ever been on the verge of being entirely wiped out? Never even been to Santa Anita. (laughs) Bad Hubert. He's always president of everything. Uh, Excuse me, John. Hello. Oh, hello, Alan. Put your ear close to the receiver and I will caress it with my golden tones. (laughs) Hubert, aren't you up kind of early today? Well, I'm not up and around yet, Alan. I'm phoning for my bubble bar. Hubert, for your information, it's dangerous to have a phone in the bathtub. Uh, what do you mean, Alan? Well, you're liable to get a shock. It'll knock the breath right out of you. Alan, that is absolutely impossible. Impossible? Hubert, if you get a shock, your breath is bound to leave your body. Mine has no better place to go. <laughs> Hubert, I suppose you call up to brag about being elected president of the Adventurers Club? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I yes. call up. I call up to give you the raspberry. Oh, ras, oh, ras, oh, berry, oh, berry. <laughs> All right, Hubert. So you're president of the Adventurers Club, so what? Well, Alan, just think how Dolores Darling will feel about this. She'll worship the ground I walk on, and that'll make two of us. Yeah, that's all. Is that all you have to say to me, Hubert? But, Alan, you don't seem to get the significance. Significance, yeah. No. I shall become a great adventurer like Marco Baseball. Marco Baseball? You mean Marco Polo. We updikes prefer a game with a diamond in it. understand how you became president of the Adventurers Club. You're no braver than I am. Ooh, what you said. <laughs> Why, all we updikes were great adventures. Uh, I once had a very close shave when I was captured by some cannibals. Well, I had a close shave, too. What did you do? Saw the razor's edge twice. <laughs> you to tell me you were captured by cannibals. But I was, Alan. They put me in a great big pot and stuffed parsley in my ears and twine celery in my hair. Hubert, how come you got away? I look so pretty, they couldn't eat me. (laughs) Stop making up those stories. If you're president of the club, I know you bought your way in. Well, I I haven't got time to argue with anyone as insignificant as you. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I have an important conference with my attorney. A conference with your attorneys? Yes. I hate to see any dissension in this country, so I'm foreclosing my mortgage on the state of Georgia. (laughs) Our Wawa. Our Wawa. Glad he hung up. I guess you but right, Jonathan. I'll never amount to anything. Well, stiff up a lip, me lad. Remember what the poet said. Mm-hmm. Into each life a little rain must fall. What did you say? Into each life a little rain must fall. May the Chamber of Commerce have mercy on your soul. 
Tell me, lad. Things are always darkest before the dawn. Well, I could do something like getting into the Adventurers Club. Then maybe Dolores would realize I'm somebody, too. I... Mm. Well, it's the government courier with the Daily Post. Yeah, the mailman, yeah. He's... <laughs> Slipped a couple of letters under the door. I'll get them. Bill, Bill, Bill. Nothing but... Oh, look, a letter from my Aunt Martha. I haven't heard from her in a long time. Let's see what she has to say. <laughs> Dear Alan, I know you'll be surprised to hear from your old auntie. I hate relatives. <laughs> yeah. Alan, I came across a picture of you taken 20 years ago. Glad she's not my aunt. Uh, that picture of you age of six reminded me what an adventurous and brave boy you were. Glad she's not living in this house. Since I last wrote you, my poor husband passed away and left me two million dollars. Two million dollars? Open the door, Richard, and let the woman in. Just be quiet a minute. I'll read the rest of it. I'm sorry, my lad. Carry on, carry on. Look what she says. The picture shows you with a bow and arrow dragging a bear home from the woods. I don't remember doing anything like that. You killed a bear with a bow and arrow at the age of six? Aunt Martha has the picture. I guess I did. She, She says she's forwarding the picture under separate cover. Well, it's incredible, my lad. I've never heard of such a thing. You can't understand it. I, I was such a puny little kid. I was the weakest kid on the block. Come now, let's not be modest. Really, I, I was a weakling, really. Hmm. All the other kids used to milk a cow with their fingers. I had to use a nutcracker. <laughs> can't get over it. As for me killing a bear at the age of six. My lad, this is your opportunity. Seize it. What do you mean? With this brave deed, you could get as much publicity as Hubert Updike. You think so, Jonathan? My lad, the newspapers are hungering for stories just such as these. You're right, Jonathan. I'll go down and see the editor of the Van Nuys Gazette. Come in. Well, hello, Alan. Come on in. Thanks, Jimmy. I came over to tell you I'm expecting a big story in the Van Nuys Gazette. Well, that's swell, Alan. Calls for a celebration. Yeah. How about a drink? Yeah, okay. I'll have milk. <laughs> You'll have milk. No. But this occasion calls for something stronger than milk. Oh, you're right. Put an olive in it. <laughs> See, Jimmy, this will make the people at Van Nuys notice me. Well, don't let it go to your head, Alan. You stay just as nice and friendly as you are. Above all, be sure you have a big, bright smile for everyone. Oh, I will, Jimmy, I will. I'll keep my teeth as bright and sparkling as ever with eye panna toothpaste. Alan, I'm glad you said that. Jimmy, I thought you would be. Well, naturally, because eye panna does help keep your teeth bright. And friends, you too should discover just what makes eye panna toothpaste so good for your teeth. See how eye panna can help your teeth. Help your smile to a brightness and loveliness you never thought possible. You see, Ipana is designed not only to clean your teeth, but with gentle massage to aid in the health of your gums. And firm, healthy gums are so important to sounder, brighter teeth, to that more sparkling smile. Ask your dentist. A recent national survey showed that seven out of ten dentists recommend gum massage. Not only that, but dentists themselves prefer Ipana two to one over any other dentifrice for their own personal use. So why don't you, too, try Ipana toothpaste and see how Ipana can help you. Remember, Ipana, for your smile of beauty. Well, Alan Young has discovered that he killed a bear at the age of six. We now find him entering the office of the Van Nuys Gazette to give his story to the editor. There's a newspaper office. Let's see, now, who should I speak? Oh, there's the girl who helped me last time. Uh, pardon me, miss. I wonder if you can help me. He wonders if I can help him, he wonders. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, miss, I want to... By the way, what is your name? My name is Narcissus Van Der Pyle, my name. I see. Well, Narcissus, I have a wonderful story for your paper. It's about an adventure I had as a boy. Gee, it sounds fascinating. Gee, it... Gee... <laughs> Well, you don't understand, our sisters. This was a real adventure. One day I came face to face with a wild animal. I could feel his hot breath on my neck. I've been in parked cars, too. <laughs> of course, they never take me out again, of course. I never had a steady boyfriend. I never. Something about me seems to keep them away. Something about... Yeah. Was your mother frightened by a repeater pencil? <laughs> if you're asking me for a date, the answer is yes. 
Look, Narcissa, you, you've got it all wrong. That's why no man ever asked me for a date. What do you mean? I got it all wrong. Hmm. Well, just tell me where I can find the editor, huh? The editor is a very busy man, the editor. But just go right through that door over there. Sometimes it sticks in this weather, it sticks. So pull hard. You jerk the door open, you jerk. <laughs> Thanks, Narcissus. I'll find the place I'll find. Here's his office. Van Nuys Gazette. Editor-in-Chief B.B. Busby. Come in. Come in. Come in! Pardon me, Mr. Busby. Pick up, young man. I haven't got all day. I'm a busy man. Always on the go. Always yeah. on the go. Busy Busby, they call me. Got to run this place all by myself. Nobody's competent. Nobody's competent around here. When I'm not down at the police station chasing ambulances, I'm flying off to Washington to interview Congress. I'm busy Busby, that's me. Well, what do you want? Come on. <laughs> Mr. Busby, I have a story. Uh, just a minute. I've got to use the phone. Hello, copy this. Wipe out the lead story on page one. Get in touch with the real Hold the magazine section and send up Mr. Thompson. I want Mr. Thompson up here right away. Uh, Mr. Busby, I was going Sit to... Sit down, Thompson. You must be tired. <laughs> Mr. Busby, I'm Alan Young. Oh, oh, I beg your pardon. Well, uh, what did I come here to see you about? What? <laughs> You didn't come to see me. I came to see you. Oh, 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 oh. Cigar? I don't smoke. Cigarette? I don't drink either. No. <laughs> Busby, I've got a story uh, that Just I... a minute, young man. Hello, comic section. How many times have I told you about the paper shortage? You've got to condense the comics. You heard me. Condense. Condense. I don't care if little orphan Annie has to sleep on the same brick with vitamin flint heart. <laughs> condense, I said. C-O-N-D-E. Oh, look it up yourself. Goodbye. <laughs> Mr. Busby. Oh, are you still here, Thompson? No, no, no. My name is Alan Young. I killed a bear when I was six years old. Where's Thompson? I told him to send Thompson up here. I guess you didn't hear me, Mr. Busby. I shot the bear with a bow and arrow, and not many bears are killed by archery. Oh, oh, yes, archery, archery. Listen to him all the time on Duffery's Tavern. <laughs> Mr. Busby, I thought that would make a great story. Story? What story? Always interested in a story. I killed a bow and arrow named Thompson with a six-year-old bear. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I killed a bear at the age of six. Uh, sit down, Thompson. You must be tired. Look. <laughs> I know this sounds astonishing. Astonishing. A-S-T. Look it up yourself. <laughs> but I can give proof of the whole incident. Amazing story. Amazing, my boy. Have you got the picture? No, but I'm getting one, Mr. Thompson. I mean, Mr. Busby. Uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful now. I uh, came exactly at the right moment. The Adventurers Club is holding a convention right here in town. I know. Hubert Updike is the president. Anybody who killed a bear at the age of six belongs in the Adventurers Club. Why, the Van Nuys Gazette will be proud to sponsor your admittance. Gee, me, a member of the Adventurers Club? I'll be as good as Hubert Updike. Get hold of that picture at once. I want to print it in the Van Nuys Gazette. Sure, it's going to be in the next mail. Remember now, you will be upholding the honor of Van Nuys in the Adventurers Club. You've got... Well, I've got work to do now. Now, nice to have met you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh... Busby. Oh, yeah, Mr. Busby. Well, goodbye. Show you how a big game hunter operates, Jonathan. Hand me that whipping chair. Here you are, my lad. Now to show him who's master. Look, back into the corner, you. Back, I say. I'm not afraid of those ferocious fangs. Now to use the whip in the chair. <clears throat> You've tamed him, my lad. You've tamed him. I certainly have. Now drag him out and bring in the next rabbit. <laughs> Me lad, you've been doing this all day. We're running out of rabbits. Don't be silly. There's always one ahead of you. <laughs> Jonathan, joining the Adventurers Club has given me a new spirit. Me lad, you know, Jonathan Mildew should be a member of the Adventurers Club himself. Huh? I've had several adventures in the theater that would make your hair stand up on end. You have? Of course, me lad. Never will I forget the time I played Boiled Potato Idaho. Uh -huh. <laughs> my audience consisted entirely of cowboys. Now, in the middle of my magnificent portrayal of Hamlet, one of these uncouth creatures threatened to shoot me suspenders in half. Gee, what happened, Jonathan? The curtain and me pants came down together. <laughs> Sort of Hamlet at half mast. <laughs> I'll get the door, Jonathan. Well, then I, my lad, shall return to be rehearsing. Oh, oh, hello, Dolores. Oh, hello, honey. Can I come in? Uh-huh. Oh, Alan, the afternoon paper just came out, and that story about you is wonderful. About me and the bear, you know. Oh, yes. Oh, honey, I didn't know you liked to hunt dangerous games. Sure, sit down. I mean, sit down. <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. Oh. 
Imagine a little boy of six killing a bear. Mm. <laughs> you know, you've always acted pretty shy with me. But now I know the real you. You do? Yes. Oh, I might have known that you were different below the surface. You're, you're just like still water. Still water? Yes, and you know what they say about still water. Huh? Breeds mosquitoes? <laughs> just imagine you killing a bear, Alan. Why, only someone very brave and clever could do a thing like that. I guess you're right at that, Dolores. Uh -huh. Daniel Boone sometimes spent months tracking down bears. He used to sneak up on them very quietly. I guess he did, Alan. Strange family, those Boones. What do you mean? Daniel Boone was so quiet, and F.E. Boone is so noisy. <laughs> I thought you'd like me becoming an adventurous man. Though. Uh huh. That, that's why I dropped over. I thought you might be in the mood for some adventure. Ah. <laughs> Come on, sit down beside me. I will so. <laughs> Come on, honey, move a little closer. Mm. Ah. After all, you're an adventurer now. Columbus wasn't afraid of adventure. Everybody else thought the world was flat, but not Columbus. He was convinced that it was round. Well, must have met somebody like you. <laughs> uh, Dolores, I'm not that kind of an adventurer. I... Oh, 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 look, the mailman left a package on your porch. Yeah, he's got an alpine inflection in his whistle, too. That must be the picture from Aunt Martha. Let's get it, shall we? Picture? Yeah. You read the story in the paper. Will you see the photographs of me dragging a huge grizzly bear? Oh. Yeah, it's for my Aunt Martha. Dolores, I'll give you the honor of opening this and seeing a real hunter. <laughs> Gosh, oh, this is so exciting, Alan. Ah, oh, look at the picture. Ah, oh, gee, you were a cute little boy. <laughs> and you're carrying a bow and arrow. <laughs> and you're dragging a little toy teddy bear. <laughs> Just a toy teddy bear. Oh, Alan, what's going to happen when they find out at the initiation tonight? Uh, Before Alan starts suffering with colds, you can get fast relief, real relief from your cold discomfort with Minute Rub, a really modern chest rub. Did you say Minute Rub? Uh, Is that hype? Yes, I said Minute Rub. Just rub Minute Rub on your throat, chest, and back. In a minute, Minute Rub's soothing menthol vapors begin to clear up that stuffy feeling in the nose and throat. In a minute, Minute Rub starts to bring a feeling of warmth and relief to those tight, sore, aching muscles. Really, Minute Rub will give you the kind of relief you want from your cold discomfort. And Minute Rub will give it to you fast. And listen, here at last is a chest rub that's greaseless and stainless. Disappears like vanishing cream and can't stain clothes or bed linens. So get a tube of Minute Rub and get quick relief from that annoying cold misery the modern way. The greaseless, stainless, Minute Rub way. thought he killed turned out to be a toy teddy bear. Meanwhile, the Adventurers Club is meeting at the mansion of its president, Hubert Updike. We now find Alan and his friend Jonathan Mildew arriving at Hubert's house. Jonathan, what am I going to do? If I go through with this initiation, I'll get killed. If they find out about a toy teddy bear, Mr. Busby of the Van Nuys Gazette will kill me. Courage, my lad. There's no turning back now. You must meet your obligations like a man. Go in there and face the music. The music is right. They're going to zip my de-doo-da. <laughs> Up the steps now, my lad. They're probably waiting inside for you. Yes, they are. Might as well ring Hubert's bell here. <laughs> oh, Alan, Alan, come in, come in. Oh, 
Thank you, but, you, but this is my friend, Jonathan Mildew. Greetings and salutations. In the words of the ancient poet, Ave Imperato Morituri Te Salutam. Oh, how vulgar. <laughs> That's Shakespeare. He's a very famous man. Oh, really? How many Cadillacs have got? <laughs> I'm leaving this house at once. I refuse to be associated with such a common person. And when he called me a common person, he did, he did, he did, he did. <laughs> Mr. Dyke, in the words of that great Scottish poet Mackenzie, Hootman, you're a schnock. <laughs> Gee, Jonathan was really upset. Why, if, if Mother heard that, she'd have a fit. Well, Scaparelli, of course. The best. <laughs> yeah, but I guess the Adventurers Club has my initiation all planned. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, Alan. But, but first, I want you to meet the man in charge of your initiation. man in charge of my initiation? Yes, he handles the initiations for our club all over the world. And, uh, Alan, this is Mr. Ghoul. Oh, how do you do? Good evening. You are the subject for tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you're Mr. Ghoul. That's right. Ar Mortis Ghoul. Ar Mortis? The R couldn't possibly stand for... Could it? <laughs> Are you prepared, young man? We have some very deadly initiations. Deadly? Last year, I made a man put his head in a lion's mouth. Did anything happen to him? Nothing much, except now he never says yes or no. He just shrugs his shoulders. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do with me? Come with me, young man. Come with me. But where are you taking me? Into the next room. It is very dark in there. Very dark in there. Come. Oh, you don't want me. You want your lamplighter. <laughs> I must ask you questions before the initiation. Yes. Sit down in this chair. Thanks. Tell me, how old are you? Well, what difference does my age make? We don't want to hurt anybody. The older you are, the easier the initiation. Oh. How old are you? 112. <laughs> 112? You are 112? Sure. Well, I got three orchids from Tom Brenneman. <laughs> I, uh, I think you are fit enough for our initiation. No, but I'm not. I haven't told you everything. When I was a kid, I, I, I swallowed 35 nickels. So you swallowed some nickels. That has nothing to do with your condition now. Oh, but it has. Every once in a while, I get a terrible urge to crawl into pinball machines. <laughs> Young man, you do not seem very eager for this initiation. Surely an adventurer like you has no fear. Me afraid? <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> we are just going to put you in a room all by yourself. Oh, sure. If you can do anything to scare me, I'll be a Dutch uncle. A Dutch uncle. Then we are going to send in a grizzly bear. Look, Mr. Ghoul. Come, we must give the story to the newspaper men. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Busby. Uh, B.B. Busby is the name, yes, sir. Busy Busby always covers the special events of Van Nuys Gazette. Personally, never miss a special event, always on my toes. Who's up on Busby? What race is this? What? <laughs> Mr. Busby, this is the Adventurers Club initiation. Oh, oh yes, Mr. Young. You're fighting the bear. Yeah. Uh, yeah, great thing you're doing for Van Nuys. Gotta call Joe now and give him the story. Yeah. Hello, Joe. Pull out the front page. Got a new slant, Joe. Change the headline, Joe. Yeah, that's right. So long, Sam. <laughs> Sam, yeah. Well, I, I guess I'll have to fight the bear now. There's nothing else I can do. That's right, young. Remember, Van Nuys is depending on you. Yes, Mr. Busby. Maybe Hubert will help me out. Oh, Hubert. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Hubert. <laughs> can I see you in the next room for a minute? Why, yeah, Tom. Yeah. Look, Hubert, I have to fight a real bear. A real bear? Oh, Mother, turn on the faucet. We're getting rid of a drip tonight. <laughs> yeah, but you got to help me. If you can slip into one of those bear, bear skin rugs of yours, they'd never know the difference out there. Alan, you want me to pretend that I'm a bear? <laughs> That's right, Hubert. Well, I'd like to, Alan, but I just can't do it. If I have to play an animal, it's got to be a silver fox or nothing. <laughs> yeah, but you got to help me. Look, I'll slip into this bear, bear skin rug and put it right over you. There. Now, look at yourself in the mirror, Hubert. Oh, heavens, how awful. I've got five o'clock shadow all over. Look. <laughs> Let's rehearse a little. Make it look realistic. You've got to believe I'm fighting a real bear. You've got to be ferocious. All right, I'll be ferocious. Yes. Now scratch with your claws. All right, Alan, I'll scratch. 
you, but you're supposed to scratch me, not yourself. Oh, but I feel so good. I know. <laughs> Now, wave your claws around. Growl at me. Come on, Hubert. Twist my arm. All right, Hubert. Now, let me twist your arm. But, Alan, I bruise so easily. Well, oh, I guess it looks realistic enough. Now, I'll go back in there and tell him I'm ready to fight the bear. Well, now, don't worry, Alan. It won't be the real bear. It'll be me. Good. Now to louse up Alan and send in a real bear. Oh, uh, here's the bear behind the screen. Hello, bear. <laughs> Heaven's a Yale man. <laughs> now I'll just wheel him up to the door. Now to open the door and let the bear out. All right. Don't be alarmed, man. The bear is coming out of the cage. I'll handle it. <laughs> That's great, Hubert. You look like a real bear. No kidding. Now let's just spar around for a while. Make it look tough. Okay? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Now we'll go. <laughs> you, you, Hubert! Stop ad living. Hubert! <laughs> you, you tore my shirt in half. Stop being so rough. <laughs> Let go of my leg. Hubert, give me back my shoe. <laughs> Gee, he ate it. <laughs> <laughs> now he's eating my socks. Wait! Wait till I get my feet out! <laughs> All right, Hubert. If you want to play rough, I can play rough, too. Take that! <laughs> Gee, I hope I didn't hurt, Hubert. Well, great work, great work. I've got to get to the phone right away and call the paper. Yes, sir, what a story, what a story! Oh, thanks, Mr. Busby. There was nothing to it, nothing to it. You did quite well, Alan. Thanks, Hubert. <laughs> Hubert, you... But the bear, I thought that you were... You mean the bear was, and all the time I thought... That's right, Alan. Oh, Mother Hitch up the horses, he almost fixed my wagon tonight. <laughs> Alan Young will be back in just a moment. You know, men, it's a fact. When you look successful, it's easier to be successful. So watch your appearance, especially your hair. Rely on Vitalis and the 60-second workout, famous for these three big advantages. One, Vitalis keeps even the driest, most unruly hair under control in a natural, masculine way. Two, the Vitalis workout loosens your tight scalp, prevents dryness. Three, the Vitalis workout routes embarrassing loose dandruff, helps retard excessive falling hair. Yes, better remember Vitalis. To look your best tomorrow, get a bottle of Vitalis tonight. And now, here's Alan Thanks, Jimmy Friends, although the war is over The job of the USO is still as great as ever There'll be a million and a half men In the armed forces in 1947 Still needing the USO To the man overseas waiting for his discharge And the teenage soldier away from home for the first time The USO is a symbol of home and relaxation So give and give generously to the USO Thanks a lot. And during the week, please remember the two fine products that bring you this show, Ipana for the Smile of Beauty and Minute Rub, the Modern Chest Rub. Ipana, Minute Rub. Until next week, then, this is Alan Young saying good night. Thank you. This is Jimmy Wallison. To remind you, The Alan Young Show is written by Al Schwartz and Sherwood Schwartz. The part of Hubert Updike is played by Jim Backus. And if you have a half hour next Wednesday, listen to Duffy's Tavern over most of these stations. This is NBC, the National Broadcast.